Good evening. This is Edward and Anne, sonsofgod.com, and it's uh, October 1st, and that would be um, day the 1st? Yeah, day the 1st. Thursday, right? <laughs> day is Thursday, in case anyone was wondering what day it was. Sometimes I wonder what day it is. So pardon my voice, it's a little bit um, having some difficulties this evening. And we're going to get into a topic that uh, we're all very familiar with. And part of the problem being familiar with it is that we already have concepts about it, like so much of the word. And, um, but that's okay. Uh, the purpose of of this evening, and really the purpose of the podcast, is not really to expound upon a word or a concept or a scripture, but to help us to step outside the box and look at everything differently. That's really the goal behind everything that Ann and I are doing. The Lord spoke to us a few years back when he was talking about the books and he was talking about the first three books, how they were, um, they opened portals. And I don't, do you happen to have that handy? I don't. Uh, Yeah. Anyway, they were, they were door openers. They were, they would open the portal to another world that literally you could begin to experience. And then he went on to say that the fourth book, which was Into the Light, is even beyond that. He kind of used the the word magical in just the fact of what uh, it uh, would achieve in bringing people into the deep things. And so... It's important that we don't just read it once and drop it and put it down and go on to the next. Uh, I know most of most of you, most of those who are uh, tracking with us and uh, have read the books a number of times. And if you don't have it, please send me an email because I would like every time we had we should have done this earlier but um, I would like everyone to have a PDF copy of each of the books what I do is I put it on my iPad and um, I'm able to read it uh, in the evening it's it's just easier to access and you can actually search it um, by, you know, you can just put the search function in there and search it by a word or a phrase. And a lot of times when I'm doing research, I will use that to pull up uh, relevant words or uh, visions uh, along the line of what the Lord is uh, directing us to, to do. So I, I just encourage you uh, to stay in the Word and... Um, and just keep working with it because we're coming up higher constantly and as we go up to higher levels as we've said before our ability to know the truth see the truth understand comprehend the truth changes dramatically because we're in a state of change we're in a state of flux and I think everyone realizes that that um, we're not static. This is not church uh, from the days of the church age where everything kind of is in slow motion. Uh, These are the days of the kingdom and the days of spirit. Everything is in fast motion, if you will. So pretty much going back to what I said, the real goal of of the books, the real goal of the podcasts is just to get you to step outside the box and look at something from an entirely different perspective. 
and uh, let the Lord reveal to you. And, you know, because so often we come, you know, as we've said, whether we like it or not, we kind of come with a, with our, our glass full or half full, and we don't even realize that we're doing that, and it can be hard to embrace something new, not because it's a conflict, but because when you're that full, you really don't have eyes to see. And the Lord has been working overtime for the last, you know, 15, 20 years uh, to get us to drop our concepts and our paradigm and our limitations so that he could reveal something new. And it really has involved getting us to step outside the box to look at something entirely different. So we're going to talk about worship this evening. And, you know, I, I, this may be a stretch for some. I don't know. But um, there's another way of looking at worship than the context that we've always seen worship. And a lot of that comes from our days in the church. You know, worship is a congregational thing. Um, it's raising hands, it's whatever at home you're worshiping. Um, and all of that is fine. I'm not negating any of that. But this is the day of the greater and not the lesser. And um, worship is a lot more than we've understood. I remember back in the days of the church, when Ann and I were involved in pastoring churches. And I remember speaking to our mentor one time to really understand something more about worship. And basically the, the response was, you know, this isn't really... I mean, yes, the people are worshiping God and it's all good, but he says this isn't for God's benefit. This is to help the people open up and focus. And so the act of worship was really more to get people to open up because they're coming to the church. They're, they've got all of their garbage of the day. They haven't taken a shower, spiritual shower. They haven't washed off. They haven't left it at the door. They've brought it in. And um, unless they come up higher, lift their vibration, they're not going to get anything. They won't hear the word. And so everything really was focused around, let's, let's get these people into worship. Let's, let's get it cleaned off. Let's come up higher. Um, and so sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. Sometimes you had to do a jig and even the jig didn't help. You know. But worship... And I, we're just touching on it tonight, and I'd like to talk about it further um, another time. But I'm putting the Lord on the point here tonight because we have something that is like an elephant in the room. It is so huge, and yet we haven't realized it. Uh, and, you know, so I began to reflect back on things the Lord has spoken about, things that he has taught us over the last 20 years, specifically about worship and the creative power behind worship and what we are with respect to worship. And I'll, I'll, I'll you know, kind of work with me here this evening. Um, I'm going to bring up a few things. Um, so give me a second here all right let's see where we are um, one minute one minute 
Okay, so. One of the things that, you know, we have said many times is that everything in creation and everything concerning us is about frequency, vibration, energy. We've talked about sickness and that over 90% of what you go through or the illnesses you may have are not valid because there's an entity involved and it's a frequency, it's a vibration, it's energy. And so we've run down the road trying to find solutions but when the problem is on the third floor, you're not going to find an answer to it on the first floor. You've got to come up higher and really see it in proper perspective. And so it's interesting how the Lord looks at the sons because the word says that he earnestly desires the spirit that he has caused to dwell in you. And let me see here. Like I said, just kind of work with me. Got to, um, didn't get a chance to print these out. Very interesting. But many years ago, the Lord began to talk about worship and the sons and music. And he said that each son is like a musical note. They vibrate at their own unique frequency. The sound that they emit, not when they open their mouth and worship, but what you are. And, you know, it's like that scripture, it's, uh, I think it's Romans 12, where Paul talks about the acceptable uh, worship is giving your entire self. Let me read that, just so we have that down. Hold on a second. Romans 12. One. Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But what Paul was saying is that at the real essence of worship is what you are as an individual, as a human being, as a son. And that each one has its own unique frequency. And we've talked about that. I have a unique frequency to my being. Anne has something different. Each one of you are um, different and he said, the sons are like musical notes. Each of the sons vibrate at a unique frequency. And that frequency is like a musical note. And we are worship to him. And each day that we arise, we have changed just a little bit more. And as such, our frequency, our vibration, our musical note per se, is different. It's changed. So we're a living worship to the Lord each day. And he said, with each new day, a new song is sung. You, when you arise in the morning, even unbeknownst to any regime that you may have or, or not have, whether you feel energetic or tired, 
whether you feel great or you feel terrible, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because worship is what you are in your essence. And each day you arise, it is like a, like a fresh new thing, a new frequency, new vibration that goes before the Lord. You don't even have a choice. At this point, you are worship to Him. Everything you do is worship to Him. Whether you sit down or get up, you know, He knows your innermost thoughts. It doesn't matter if you feel you failed that day, if you're not walking in a way that, you know, your carnal mind says you need to be. We've all fought that. It doesn't matter. You are a living worship, transcending anything and everything that we would think of ourselves. This in itself brings a tremendous peace. You might say the suns scattered throughout the earth are a living symphony before God. Each day they arise, unbeknownst of the other, because we're talking about a spiritual reality. It's not people that you know, it's not a church congregation or building or anything, but it's the sons that have been seeded into the earth. God has seeded his sons across the face of the globe. How does the word go? Scattered on the tops of the mountains. The suns are scattered across the face of the earth. And most don't know of the other unless they move into a plane of spirit where they begin to know. And as each day arises and the sun comes up, the suns are like a living symphony to God. We don't have to go someplace to worship. We, that's, not, that's, that's so far short of what we really are. So far short. Let me read, let me read some more here. Hold on just a second. It's interesting, you read the book of Revelation and it talks about how the Father is enthroned upon our praises. Like everything in, in, in spirit, worship is substance. Sound, frequency, vibration are substance. And we literally, in, in, you know, How does the word go? Enthrone him upon our praises. A lot of times you hit situations where you don't know what to do. And so you are you might think, well, I'm just going to pray in tongues. But really, all we have to do is worship. That really is probably the one thing that we could do that would be the most effective of anything right now. And I know we've talked about speaking the word and being directed. And of course, as that, you know, as the Lord reveals, so we do. But just to worship Him every day could be nothing greater. How did the psalmist go? He says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God 
than to live in the tents of the wicked or right? Yeah. It's interesting that and we've talked about this, the sounds that are going into the earth right now are sounds of death and destruction and hatred. And yet, the sounds coming from the sons are sounds of worship and praise. Not even so much that we're concerned about speaking the word, which we will do, but it's recognizing what we are. To me, worship has nothing to do with the form and the ritual that we may have known in the past. But it has everything to do with what God has created each of the sons to be as a living worship. That as you walk throughout the day, you are worship. Whether you are aware of that or not, it's going on 24-7. The Lord began to talk about opening portals in the realm of spirit and that our worship and our singing unto Him literally opens portals, opens doors. And it, this is something relatively new. It's not an experience that would perhaps be that common or that maybe that we're that conscious of. But as we enter into a deeper level of worship, by virtue of just knowing what we are and knowing that this is what is emerging from us and we give ourselves to that, that that literally begins to open portals in the spirit, portals of change, ways of, of, of entering into a different level of life. In fact, there was... Um, something he brought some time back in the whole scope of worship, but perhaps uh, a little different. And he showed me a group, a, a family of elemental spirits. And they were singing, singing to Anne and I, and as they sung, it was like a worship. And I, I believe that they were doing that unto the Lord, the Christ in us, that the sons are. And as that worship and that singing went up before God, it opened a portal a portal that we were able to follow their worship back and enter through that portal to where they were. Which I know this that's probably a little outside the box, but it's like someone giving you, throwing out a, uh, a life raft or a life rope or whatever and it goes through the portal and as they sing and they worship the portal opens and that that cord that thread that rope is tossed and all you have to do is follow that worship back and there you are with them very interesting experience um, and I'm sure there'll be 
uh, greater understanding when the time uh, presents itself for you know what that will be needed for the Lord spoke some time back that we should start and end our day with worship and I think a lot of it is just connecting in with who each of us are and not looking at it as though it is something outside of us, something that we're all of a sudden going to do, but rather connecting in with something that you're already doing. All the Word talks about in the book of Revelations how Everyone in the, in the realm of spirit is just, you know, they're, they worship the Father, and it's just, uh, it's so expansive, it's hard to even grasp it, really, what is, what is happening. And so, for us, rather than feeling like we are having to initiate something, all we're doing is tapping into what's flowing out of our spirit. And right now, your spirit is worshiping. In two hours from now, it'll be worshiping. Tomorrow morning, it'll be worshiping. Because that's part of our state of being that God has created in us. That's the real worship that's coming. And it's coming because God has been perfecting the sons. It says, you know, they that come must, you know, worship in spirit and truth. It's kind of hard to come with a bunch of baggage and whatnot. But the more God clear, clears off the sons, the, the freer they are just to come and worship. You know, and you, you go through those valleys in between the mountaintops and could seem a little rough and your response is, well, Lord, though you may slay me, yet will I serve you. Yet will I worship you. The, the whole realm of spirit is so fascinating and so far greater than anything that we understand because everything is living the spirit world is living these things aren't concepts off a page this is something that we're immersed in like we've said in the books we've been immersed in a sea of spirit that surrounds us and flows through us constantly flowing through us and we're we're responding to and feeling the essence of, of of the Father's kingdom and the Spirit that flows through us. And now I, I just feel like it's another step to to let go of what we've known of worship and begin to understand what He has created us to be, and to give ourselves to another level of worship that is outside of the box. So I think that's all we want to talk about this evening. I'd love to talk about it some more. We'll see what the Lord does. But there is something of an experience of worship and of living in a state of worship that has substance beyond what we've understood. How it affects the Father and how it flows through us and tapping into our spirits that are always worshiping. It's so powerful and there is so much that can be Done, and that is being done. And it's important for us to be able to just 
Look at everything from a different perspective. Look at worship from a different perspective. Look at what we are, who we are, from an entirely different perspective. And realize what is going on, even in our unawares. And in realizing, hopefully we can give ourselves more and more to it. Give ourselves to what is happening that perhaps we've only had an inkling of. We are a living worship. You know, people go out there and bands sing songs and they, they go through whatever and it's all fine because they're, you know, school starts at K-1. But this is the day of graduation. It's the day that you are the living worship before God. And it goes hand in hand with his indwelling within you. And I just feel like sometimes we can feel like things can be kind of like striving. You know, you, sometimes you feel like you're striving to find answers, to work things out, uh, or to do what you feel you're supposed to do in your devotional life before God. And sometimes it would be it's better to just take a step back you know, stop everything. Stop striving. Stop trying to create something, be something, do something. Just let it all go and surrender yourself to just worship. <coughs> just worship. But doing it from this level of awareness of what you are. And you connect into your spirit which enables and emboldens it even more for you to be what you are to the Father. So Anne and I will sign off this evening. We thank you for uh, making the podcast and we'll be in touch again.